Hey everybody, Chris here from Tiny Home Tours and the Off Grid Schoolie. You're actually in my school bus conversion right now. Today's video features Aubrey. She's a perfect example of someone that found a vintage RV, uh, renovated it into what she wanted it to be, and is full time on the road right now. She does have a side business where she does leather works. Uh, her business will be linked down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week. So, my name's Aubrey. I live in my 1985 Toyota Dolphin full time as of a couple months ago and it's been interesting. I actually found the rig. I was looking for vans. I was wanting to like live in a van and kind of do the stealth thing for a while and then found this on Craigslist. My pops convinced me that I should just go check it out so I did even though it was like a little out of my price range more than I thought I wanted. I just wanted a crappy van just to like live in for a bit. But I went and I met this lady on Craigslist and she was freaking awesome. She's like this tough as nails old lady who would just take this and her dog and they'd go out into the forest and go find rivers and fish, fly fish all the time. And I was like, ooh, this girl's rad. Like I just kind of want to keep her legacy going. She didn't want to get rid of the dolphin, but her, bad, or her back was going kind of bad. So she uh, sold it to me for cheaper. She's like, yeah, I didn't want to sell it for that cheap, but you're pretty cool and I kind of want to keep the legacy going too. So, so yeah, she sold it to me and I can bought that back in, I guess, end of June, 2018. All right, welcome to my little home. This is the kitchen. It's pretty awesome. I have like a four burner stove here, which I love. I cook on it every day, breakfast and dinner, and sometimes if I make lunch or whatever, but it's perfect. I really, I really, really, really love having the stove set up instead of using like a little burner, like a little camp stove, which I have that too, but I just use that for backpacking. So this has been super awesome. I have like the littlest baby oven, which I never use. I think I've used it once for a quiche which I didn't make, it was pre-bought, so I'm not trying to impress you with that too much. Yeah, so the stove has been so awesome, especially when I have like a couple people over or we're doing like community breakfast or something, it's nice to be able to make a few things at a time. Then I just move my cutting board over on top of my sink for a little extra countertop space. This is original, the oven and stove is original from the 80s. I put some tile in in the back just to kind of lighten it up and make this portion feel a little bit more designated for the kitchen. Everything when I bought it was like that old school wood paneling and you know like the rust carpet and super 80s. Honestly actually that's not even true it's like super 70s but in the 80s. So I painted all the walls put on the tile in the back it's obviously just like sticky tile stuff and then the sink had um, old school like faucet and handles they're like crystal Handles that probably used to be clear or white in the 80s, but they were like, I don't know, like dingy yellow colored now. So I switched all that out, put in my own, actually just like a Delta faucet. If you're looking for anything, mine was only, I think it was four inch holes and it's only two holes, four inches apart. And so it was kind of hard to find a, a sink that would fit that. So if you have that same problem, go for the Delta. The sink was there before. It was double sink already, which was really convenient, especially because I pile up dishes and I'm like, that's probably my worst thing that I do. <laughs> my messiest thing is I just load all my dishes in there and wait for like two days and then do it. So having two sinks is nice for that. And my paper towel holder guy, I just made that. I don't know. I wanted, I had some like beach driftwood and I figured I'd just make a paper towel holder out of it because I wanted to use it somewhere in my house but couldn't figure out what to do. So yeah, and then use some leather. You know, everything I feel like I should reorganize a little bit. Um, I keep dry foods, tea, all that good stuff, oils in here. And then on this side, it's like glasses, cups, wine glasses, I don't know, just extra stuff. I do use that, but I'm not using it as well as I could be. I think I need to move like all of my plates and dishes up there or all of my food up there, but I don't know. Time will help me <laughs> figure out where things need to go. So all of the cabinets are basically as they were. Obviously everything was wood paneling, so I painted it all, threw some new handles on it. It already has the like slide proof lock on it because that's how they built it in the 80s, which is super convenient. So you have to lift up and then pull out. And I have way more storage in this thing than I have need for, which is cool if I feel like getting more stuff, I don't know. But I'm finding that I'm just constantly rearranging things because 
Well, I did that in a real house anyway, but um, just to like make more use of my space. But all of that is like kitchen stuff. This is cleaning supplies. Down here, I keep like all my essential oils and like big knickknacky things because it's a lot of space. There's like just a lot of stuff down there. It's like, so this cabinet goes all the way back to the wall, which is really convenient. So I just shoved a lot of like my giant Dutch oven cooking pans in there that I don't use that often. My big jug of wine, which I use more frequently than I like to talk about. <laughs> and then like just some extra parts and that sort of thing, dog bones, essential oils, random like glassware. I left the carpet in there just so that things wouldn't slide around a ton on the ground. But otherwise, yeah, read it all that. This is pots and pans and extra cups and there's so much space under the sink. I honestly am not using this space very well either. Again, I feel like I need to go through and kind of reorganize what goes in where because there's just so much, it's too much space for me, honestly. But I just started, yeah, yeah. And when you start driving down the road and you hear things crashing around, you're like, oh, okay, I do need to rearrange that cabinet. Or you like, you finally park and everything's settled and you go in and you're like, oh, broken glass, dang it. Okay, I need to reorganize this thing so it doesn't shake around as much, but yeah, I'm learning, I'm getting there. This little back window, I love this back window. Obviously when I'm driving, this is my rear view window. So I just roll this guy up and I snap in place. Um, these are just curtains that I used for my old house. My mom and I kind of went through it and repurposed them. This thing is the best. I don't know what it's called. We'll have to Google it. But it's really nice because when I'm sitting up front and I have to look back, it kind of tilts it down and magnifies it for me because I'm not the best driver, I'll be honest. And that's like part of the reason I got the Dolphin because it's compact. I'm not driving a bus. I don't want to deal with that. So this thing was on there when I bought it. Gail is a genius, the lady I bought it from. Anyway, so that is like, if you're afraid to back up and hit people all the time and all that kind of stuff, get one of those on there. It doesn't look that cool, but it's really rad. Um, oh, and this is my little sun sticker. It just makes rainbows in my house all the time, which I'm pretty stoked about. So this is my little water meter, battery reader shindig. It works partially, so like when I fill it up, when I completely fill up my water tanks and I send it to the side and I send my little fresh button this way and I test it, it only ever goes up to halfway full, even though it's full in the tank and it's like spitting out water. It only ever goes to halfway. So then when it gets down to a quarter, I know I'm actually halfway full. And then when it gets down to empty, I'm empty. Same thing with like my gray and my black tank. So I just know that like my full capacity is halfway. But like when I switch it to my batteries and I test it, I know it goes all the way up to full. So it's not that the lights are out or anything. I don't know. So I just, that's how I gauge my water tanks. Uh, but it does work, which is cool. My water pumps up here. I only really ever turn it on when I know I'm gonna use the water. I don't really leave it running constantly. I have solar, but just, I have like a ZAMP solar fold out panel that you just set out in the sun and you hook straight up to your battery. Um, I have a 12 volt deep cycle like RV battery and that's been working really well for me. And it recharges, so I have a separate one. It lives somewhere down in here. Um, I have a separate one in here that is just for the house and then obviously my car battery. So when I'm driving, my car battery will charge this one up too. And typically if I'm driving a ton, then I hardly ever, like, ever have to set my solar panel out, but it will occasionally. And it charges up really quickly. I don't have 110 right now. I do if I plug into shore power. Like I do have some little um, 110 outlets in here that are already Oh, configured. I don't really even know what that looks like, but uh, I can't plug into it if I'm just running off of my 12 volt battery. Eventually, I would love to figure out a way to get 110 volt because it would be just blending things would be cool. Plugging in my little wood burner would be cool. Plugging in my phone normally would be cool, you know. So eventually I would like to do that. I just, it's on my list. Lots of things are on my list. Uh, but for now, when I have to charge stuff, I just use I have like a little 12 volt battery port thing and I plug my car charger into it and then that's how I charge my phone and stuff. So that works for now. And then this is my bathroom. Blah, blah, blah. It's really vintage. I'm gonna warn you, it's really vintage on the inside. I haven't done anything cool to the bathroom, so check out this wallpaper. Yeah, so this is my little bathroom. 
I I know that like a lot of people in van life, that's such a big question. Like, do I do a toilet? Do I do a bathroom? What does that look like? I love having a bathroom. It's the best thing in the world. Honestly, sometimes I'll park places where I'm not feeling like super safe about where I'm parking. Hope my parents aren't listening to this. I'm safe all the time, I'm great. <laughs> but sometimes you park places where you don't necessarily wanna have to get out of your car or you're just exhausted or you're on the road and you're like, I have to pee now. So it's really nice to have a bathroom in here to do that. I also have like a little shower too. It's a wet bath. So I just pull everything out um, when I need a shower and I have a hot water heater. And I just have a little uh, handheld shower that I use for that. And it doesn't take up too much water. And that's been super nice too. Like, I don't know, I just like to shower. But, and I feel like that's not something I was willing to give up just to live on the road. So. Shower and bathroom was a must for me, and I'm really glad I went that route with the dolphin because everything was built in for me. I did have to do or redo some of the plumbing, fix the toilet up a little bit, and eventually I'll paint the walls and make it cute. But for now, all I did was just add some shelving, and I went ahead and redid the, the sink and shower faucet just to make it just to get rid of those crystal handles. I did not want those. My freshwater tank, it's funny, it's actually really hard to find any information about it on the internet. So I took five gallon jugs and just kept filling it up until it hit max. Um, but my fresh water tank is about 20 gallons. It's not too much, but um, enough to take like a quick military shower, turn it off, keep going scrub, that sort of thing. Yeah, so 20 gallons and that gets me about a week or so. No, it is part of my drinking water and my dishes water. And I guess maybe I only shower like once a week. So that's probably where I'm saving it because I really am only showering like once a week, but then I'm not paying for a shower. When I do shower, all I have to do is just pull my little shower curtain closed so that water doesn't come out of the door. Next thing is my, my storage in here, my closet. This is my closet. Luckily, when I got this, I was really stoked to have a big place to keep all of my like clothes. I'm so silly about that, but I have a lot because I've lived in Oregon, I've lived in Arizona, I'm kind of all over the place, so I want to be set for everything. Anyway, so I just keep all of my like hanging stuff in here, dresses, jackets, all that good stuff, and then I shove my shoes back there. This goes all the way to that back wall. Uh, my closet goes all the way to that back wall. So I have a lot of space in there. There didn't used to be a shelf, so I just took a little shelf from Walmart and cut it up and wired it all back together and shoved it in there just so that I could have a little bit of a platform to keep my shoes separate from my clothes. And as you can tell, all of the inside of my <laughs> shelves and my cabinets all still look nice and old school. One day I'll paint them, but I don't really feel like doing that yet. And all the like, as far as the poles go, I made those. And that's like, part of it was saving money and just trying to use what I already have. And then the other part is just wanting this space to feel completely and totally my own. The more you can create something from your own brain for your space, the more fulfilled you're gonna be at the end of it, I guess. Uh, yeah, so I made all my little handles, except for these ones, I bought these, but they're cool. This is just bras and underwear and socks and bathing suits and all that good stuff. I just have to shove it in there every time. All of that up there is um, clothes storage as well, pants and that sort of yeah. thing. I um, have a lot of clothes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to look homeless just because I don't have an actual brick and uh, what do they call that? Bricks and sticks house? Yeah, yeah. I want to look at still. Yeah. This is my fridge. Oh man, it's. Sh when I bought the dolphin, she had actually just replaced it right before and it's awesome it runs off of both electricity if you're plugged into shore power or gas so i'm constantly using a little bit of propane for it but it really doesn't take much and it keeps things super super cold and i have a little freezer in there too which is really neat i don't know like the technical or the specifications about how large it is but it works really well gosh i have and the door comes all the way over. But I have so much storage in here. Again, I'm not the best at figuring out where things should go. So I honestly, like, I have crackers in there just because I couldn't fit them in that cabinet up there. So, like, some of my dry food's in there as well. Um, it keeps things so cold. It's a Dometic fridge, which I think it just kind of comes standard in a lot of RVs in general. Um, but, yeah, there's, like, a little freezer up here, too, which keeps things really nice. Like, I especially if I'm in a place or if I know that I'm not going to be in a place that I can get a ton of 
food for a while, like if I'm going to be boondocking out somewhere for a while, I get a lot of like frozen burger patties or frozen black bean patties or sausage or whatever and shove that in the fridge and then I have food for longer than I would normally if it was just sitting in the fridge. But yeah, I have way too much space in that fridge, honestly. So again, this storage space up here is not utilized fully. Avocados, it's like dry goods and random stuff that I shove in there like right before I start to move the camper because I don't know as soon as you live on the road you'll get it or if you've ever lived in a trailer or anything like that like if things are not in a place when you start driving they're going to be everywhere so a lot of this is like okay well I'm about to hit the road shove stuff in here and then I'll just pull it back out when I settle in somewhere um, so yeah more dry foods spices for cooking and uh, random stowaway stuff also on this side of the wall I have my whole little like power panel, fuse box, all that good stuff. Um, and then my heater is right here too. Like my heater vent is right here. It runs off of propane and it doesn't take a ton of propane, but it does take a lot of electricity. So I try not to use it if I am not going to be somewhere I can set up my solar panel for the day just to like get my battery fully charged. I haven't really had to use it very often. Um, I started my journey up in Bend, Oregon, and it was cold there, so I used it up there a little bit. But since I've kind of headed south down the coast, I just use Ike, my dog, as my my little heater heating buddy. So he just sleeps with me and keeps me warm. But yeah, it works really, really well. I'm surprised, I think just because it's such a small space too. You only have to turn it on for a little bit and it cranks out the heat. You can also use the thermostat just to like set it to stay at a certain temperature and it'll go when it needs to. So this is the other portion of my house. This is my little man Ike here. He's the coolest part of this whole thing. My little travel companion. He he's kind of used to me being a gypsy anyway so I don't think it's surprised him too much. He loves driving so um, when we do drive he's up front co-pilot the whole time and he gets to just run around and be free and meet all these other dogs and people who want to pet him all the time so he's pretty stoked and I try to get him out running or playing or whatever every day. But you have more time to focus on him because you have all the time in the world you know what I mean you're not on so much of a timeline so I've been a lot more intentional about exercising him and making sure that he's like stoked about life because he's stuck moving around with me all the time that might suck so let's just make sure that he's having a blast the whole time too but yeah he's doing pretty good he seems pretty stoked so when i first got the dolphin everything the floor and everything was covered in this rust colored carpet which honestly was pretty cool but really gnarly because it's from the 80s and i just did not want to do a carpet with a dog in here because we're constantly like at the beach or stomping around in mud or whatever so both ike and i are filthy all the time so i really didn't want to have to worry about cleaning carpet and he's so hairy that i wanted to be able to just sweep everything out so i redid the flooring and just put in some like home depot I don't even know, like vinyl flooring. It's It was super easy to put in. I just used an X-Acto knife. I mean, it was annoying because you had to measure everything, but otherwise there was no like intense cutting or anything. So I redid the floors, um, pulled the carpet off of everything, and it was everywhere, like all up on the walls, up on these back walls, in places it should have never been. There was carpet everywhere. <laughs> it was miserable. So pulled that all out, put in some new flooring, put some beadboard just along the sides, painted this all white just to keep it nice and fresh and clean. There were two captain's chairs over here, which were cool. It was like the seat belt, like just picture when you go in your grandpa's camper, that's exactly what it was like. It was just like that. So there's two captain seats and a little dinette table in here that you could remove, but it was just taking up so much space that I knew I wasn't gonna use for that purpose because it's just me and Ike. And every once in a while, I regret not having more seating, but for the most part, I just sit up on the countertop anyway. And I knew that I wanted to place, this chest ended up becoming my little library. Like I keep all of my books in there. I keep anything that's like important and sentimental in there. Things I don't want flying around, I shove in there too. And I built this countertop I just used, I got some wood and I cut it up and I threw it in there and I used some like galvanized steel pipes for the legs. It's kind of hard to see because I have so much stuff. But yeah, so I use this both for my gear storage. I do like a lot of backpacking and 
climbing and running and they do a lot, a lot of like things. So all of my gear is just shoved under here and back in there. And then also it's a really good spot. I do leather working. So I get to keep my rolls of leather in there just kind of out of the way while I'm not working on them or while I'm just traveling around. So just to keep them a little bit more protected. Yeah, and I built the countertop because I make leather and I wanted a spot to be able to have I love that sort of creative outlet and I wanted to be able to do that while I was on the road. I didn't want to have to give that up just because I don't have a workshop or anything like that. So I just kind of made my own little workshop as part of my house. It's cool because when I'm not working on leather, I can use it for like food prep or I don't know, whatever else. I, I have this big giant window here. So sometimes I just open it up and try to feed people stuff out of my windows or talk to people and it's kind of nice. I feel like I'm a food truck all the time so I should look into that. A little tea truck, yeah. Give people tea. So uh, it's all so new to me. I've never really sold my leather. It was always kind of, oh shoot, somebody's birthday is coming up and I don't have very much money so I'm going to make them something because the best gifts are handmade, right? Not always. Um, but <laughs> so I started making leather for that, but it kind of just became this passion for me. And, and it's just kind of a way that I get to share a little bit of my heart and my adventure with other people. So I'm hoping to kind of create some sort of like a little income. I'm not really looking for much. It's just to keep me on the road and to keep gas in my tank and that sort of thing. I don't know if it'll pan out, but I do. I try really hard and I'm such a perfectionist that I, I put a lot of time and energy into this leather and it's kind of cool too because it like, I want people to be able to follow along with what I'm doing, whether it's like my parents or my friends back at home or whatever. I want you guys to have like something tangible from my journey like hey i've been working on this here at these like crazy canyons all week and now i just made this wallet like the, here you go part of my adventure is now making its way to you that sort of thing so i guess the whole idea behind me making leather and selling it online so i have like a little online platform that i sell it through is kind of just like get you stoked to start your adventure like have something tangible that you got to like follow me along on my adventure with i guess just giving you a little piece of myself or a piece of my heart or a piece of my adventure or whatever yeah i don't know and i'm just stoked about leather i just want to make everybody everything all the time so that's part of it so above my leather bench area this is all of my storage for like i mean extra blankets over here a couple books here and there all of my like art supplies that I couldn't part with, paints and oil pastels and Sharpies and markers galore. And then up in here, I usually keep like all of my leather tools that are down here. I shove back in here before I hit the road so it's not just bumbling all around. Yeah, so when I hit the road, this is all usually pretty cleared off and everything just goes up in here. So I've had plenty of storage for all of that, which has been wonderful. Again, just to have a way, like even if I'm sick of leather for a couple of weeks, I can sit there and sketch or whatever. And then on this side, it's more clothes. What do you know? Pants and sweaters and all that good stuff and t-shirts and other t-shirts and more t-shirts. Beanies are shoved in there. And then this is all my like workout clothes and a ton of wool socks just in case i've had i mean i definitely have more clothes than i should for on the road but i live in this thing and so it beats having a like giant closet i guess i just keep everything folded really small and shove it in there and i definitely have too many clothes things i need to purge but i just don't want to so i have plenty of storage up there the couch is pretty cool honestly it's actually still all the original like material if i lift this up it's all really nice and old and ghetto i is not stoked about that i know eventually i'd love to get it reupholstered but that's it was really expensive so i didn't want to put that much time into it so i just got a little blanket from pendleton it's like a waxed cotton picnic blanket and i threw it on top because i knew i could brush his hair off of it really easily ah oh, pendleton come pimp my ride anyway so it was super i think it was a good idea just because it's easier to get his hair off of it as opposed to upholstering something and making sure he's never on there one of the things i decided when i hit the road. Ike has never been a furniture dog. He's never been allowed on like couches or beds or anything like that. Like very, very strict about that. And then we got into this teeny tiny space. And I was like, you can't just have this pathway. That's crappy. Like 
if you're gonna be stuck with me on the road for the rest of your life, then you can be a couch dog now. So my life is covered in hair for that reason. And he's pretty stoked about living on couches now. He's turned into a cat. These storage things, I mostly just keep tools and extra leather scraps and random, yeah, it's mostly just my tool storage, honestly. Down under here, my hot water heater does live under there. I mean, from the outside, but it's stored under there. Under this side is where my fresh water tank is. It takes up basically that whole thing. So this little storage cabinet here is a faux storage cabinet. Nothing lives under there except for old carpet and the water tank. So yeah, this is all storage under here. Right here, this is my very, not my very favorite, but one of my favorite things that I've ever come up with is this little dog bowl holder. His dog bowls are outside right now, but typically I just set his dog bowls in there and it keeps it stable. Not only because it's such a small space that I was constantly like turning around and kicking dog food everywhere, but also because he's a brat and when he's mad at me, he like will shove his dog food or his water bowls everywhere. So I was like, ah, cut that out. We're just going to give you a spot for your dog bowls. And then I don't have to carry like a big tray around all the time too. So I made this guy and then it just folds up and clicks into place. This little storage box is also just more tools that I don't really use that often, but just in case. And then this is my little bed. So up here, I have a really cool exit hatch up there actually, which is one of my favorite things. I didn't think I would love that as much, but you can open it all the way. So sometimes I just stick my head out there first thing, like just to watch the sunset when I'm too lazy to get fully out of my bed, I'll just open it up and watch the sunset from there. And it, my bed is just a foam mattress or a foam pad. And um, I just use like a big down blanket and duvet just to keep me warm if it does get cold in the desert or wherever I am. And my guitar that I hardly ever play is hanging up because I kept having to just like move it from this spot over here every time I was doing anything or trying to go to bed. So I was like, wow, well, whatever. So I just made a little thing to hook it up to the ceiling. So comfortable and so warm, actually. It's really weird. If I ever do get cold and I don't want to run the heater for some reason, I'll just turn the car on really quick and then turn the heater on and all the heat just rises right up to me. So that's nice. And then again, Ike's allowed to sleep up there with me. So he keeps me really warm too. And I have a gajillion pillows. Like you don't need this many pillows in your life. I don't know if this is a chick thing or what, but I have way too many pillows. So I just huddle those around me if I'm cold too. This divider, well, it's because I love this. This used to be my shower curtain, like my out, the out portion of my shower curtain. And I loved it and I didn't want to get rid of it. And so I turned it into a divider curtain, which um, I do really like. I like, I, I really wore with this actually, because I do like that it goes all the way to the top here. I feel like it makes this whole living space a little bit longer, or feel a little bit taller, as opposed to just starting a curtain right here, like you see in a lot of spots. But it can be kind of annoying when I'm like trying to climb up into bed or whatever, and you can see through the front or that sort of thing. So. I think all in all, I do really like that. And it keeps a lot of like, weirdly, I feel like it just keeps all my heat in there too at night. And it gives me like my own little like comfy, warm cave. Yeah, so that's how this came about. And I do like, it. I just used, again, like this was a curtain rod that I had in my house. I've really just tried to repurpose a lot of stuff that I already had as opposed to putting a ton of money into buying new curtains and buying new curtain rods and buying new, I don't know, like, gosh, if I had to redo these leather th or if I had to pay for a bunch of handle poles, that would have been, I don't know, 50, 60 extra bucks. And so if I just make it, it's cost me a couple hours, but saves me some money. So I've really just tried to repurpose everything. All my sheets were sheets that I had before and pillows. I went a little crazy buying pillows, but for the most part, I had those. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really, I've got three windows up here too. One, two, and then there's one by my feet here. And I hardly ever use them unless I'm like peeking out to see if some strange person's outside my camper. But, but I have them, I guess, if I need. Well, you have seen my house, so we're gonna go check out the outside. Okay, so this is the outside of the dolphin. Um, it looks like the 70 year old man I've always wanted to be. So I do kind of like the outside. One day I'll probably get around to painting it, but for now it's kind of like my creeper camouflage because you don't really expect a 26 year old chick to be living in there. 
either think I'm like cooking meth in there or I'm a really old man. So either way, you don't really mess with me. So yeah, so this is the dolphin. I have a storage crate on the back. I just got like a big plastic one. It's really not going to keep anybody out of it wants to get into it. It's plastic and it has some padlocks on it, but you could totally break into it. Please don't. But it's dog food and like his gear, like his little harness that I put on him when we go skating and that sort of thing. It's really just all of Ike's stuff. So it'd be a bummer if it got taken, but I don't really care that much. All very replaceable. And like a hatchet. There's a hatchet in there. So well, steal it if you want. I do have a ladder that leads up to the roof and I love it. I spend probably more time than I like to, than I probably should up there. It's not like super stable feeling up there. It's not like I have a deck up there necessarily, but as long as I walk kind of light footed, then I feel like I'm okay. <laughs> and then I keep a surfboard up there. I mean, just like a little river board on the back. I usually will just bungee it up here or throw it in the camper while I'm driving. Yeah, okay, so I'm not gonna claim that I'm a surfer. I'm very new at surfing. So don't take that too seriously, but yes, I like to surf. So yes, I've been spending time in California. That was, that was it, chasing the sun and getting a little surf if I could. It says, real women fly fish. I don't know why I kept it other than it's hilarious. It's so good. So Gail, the lady I bought this from, she was a fly fishing woman. And I don't know, she's, like I said, she's just this tough as nails old lady and I did not want to like let the legacy die by taking that off. It just felt like so much a part of this that it stayed. Yeah. So driving this thing is really funny. It's like the 20, R22 engine. So it's a bulletproof engine, really, really good engine, but it's only four cylinders. And when you're towing a house behind you, it's really nice and slow. I have gotten it up actually to like 75 sometimes on the highway. I don't know if that's bad, but probably not recommended. So it will go fast actually. I'm kind of surprised. Not up hills. Up hills we're going like 40, maybe 45 up a hill. But it's been really fun to drive. It's manual, so it helps a little bit. I do have a couple friends or a friend who has a dolphin that's automatic, and she said it's such a pain going up hills because you can't change speeds. You can't like shift into another gear, which is kind of a, a bummer. So I do really, really like that about this. Right before I bought the car or the house, the rig, she had replaced the engine. So it was like 5,000 brand new miles on an engine and the clutch was repaired and all that good stuff. So hopefully I don't run into very many like mechanical issues. I've like the biggest thing I've had to do is uh, replace like the, the pump for the windshield wiper fluid, but that's been about it. So that was cool. I get about 18 to 20 miles per gallon, which is awesome. And I did not expect that. And I'm really, really stoked, especially when you're driving through places where gas is a little bit more expensive. So yeah, I actually, I can get a lot of really good miles out of this and not have to fill up very often. And for a house to get 18 to 20 miles per gallon is pretty rad. I kept the front original because, well, first of all, redoing all this carpeting up here would have been a pain. And I kind of like these old school <laughs> like side panels. It like makes, again, it makes me feel like the 70 year old man I've always wanted to be. And part of that too is that when, because I have that curtain in the back, when somebody looks in the front of the car from the outside, they don't really think that anything's nice in here because again, it looks really old and kind of sketchy. So I kept everything original in here. The sweet shag seat covers are, <laughs> are from the previous owner and nothing is really upgraded in here. I mean, yeah, I think I have a CD player in here as opposed to like a cassette tape player, but that's about it. It's a, a dually, so that does something. I don't really know. That's been kind of nice just to like have a little bit more stability, especially when it gets windy and I'm driving just to know that like, all right, I got six tires on the ground as opposed to just four. I might not go flying. So yeah, I have more time on the road. And so where I feel like before when you're working, well, when I was working 40, 50, 60 hours a week or whatever it was, I was doing leather very few and far between. I was doing something like once every few months, just like a small something. And so now I have all this time dedicated to just creating, which makes me feel like an artist, which is not something I've ever like claim to be, you know what I mean? But it gives you that freedom to be able to say like, I am just gonna work on something and I'm gonna like wrestle with this bag or this wallet or this whatever it is until I can get it perfect and get like my vision in, in a tangible form. So 
I think it's really been inspiring for me to be able to work on my leather on the road. It has changed a lot since um, I was living in a house just because, again, time spent, I get to put more time and energy into it and love into it. And it's what I'm focusing on at that moment. And I get to just see really cool stuff on the road too. Like I've been spending the last month or so in Arizona and which I grew up here. So I really, I should have all of those things somewhere deep in my heart and all that like creative expression somewhere in there, but I didn't until I started going to all these like little antique stores and found bolo ties and chunks of turquoise. And I was like, you know what? I want to make a bolo tie bag, you know, things like that. That. So it's just given me some inspiration there and even just like color palette inspiration with working with different colors of leather. I get to make things that look or remind me of a certain spot, like reminds me of Sedona because I use this, this, and this color or reminded me of Pismo Beach because I use these colors or whatever it was. So I know, yeah, it's just a really good creative outlet for me. Well, thanks for watching, um, checking out my little home on wheels here. Um, if you're interested at all in following me on Instagram, my Instagram is adventures in Huck Finn. Again, P-H-I-N-N, -N, spelled like dolphin. And then my leather work, it's all so new, so don't be too brutal to me, but <laughs> um, I do have a little website and it's called huckfinleatherworks.com. So all the links will just be right below this video if you want to check it out.